What's going on guys, Zach here and welcome to episode number one of Let's Build Color Master in Game Maker Studio. So right off the bat, if you don't know what Color Master is, this was an old game of mine that I created a long time ago. Um, I made a video of it and you can see it right there. Go ahead and check that out. And uh, that's sort of the game we're gonna be building, but more. So my idea for this is we are gonna take this to a whole nother level. I want teleporting power-ups I want you know to be able to have certain blocks that you know maybe they're just outline blocks that you can go through um, or if you're a certain color then those switch on and then they turn off things like that I want to make this like really cool and like really taste su uh, suggestions from you guys and uh, really make this thing awesome so today we're gonna be designing it out just a little bit and we are going to be creating the first three levels of the game. And after that, we're gonna go on to the next episode, all right? So, stay tuned. All right, guys, so now we are at the stage of designing what we want to do. So, I'm gonna be going through every step of how I would go about making this game with you guys, right? So here I just have, you know, a piece of notebook paper. Let's build a game color master, the date. We have a, like kind of like a mock of what the uh, character is gonna look like and we're gonna design the first three levels so let me design this one out here all right so here we have the first one it's a little bit different from my old game uh, just something that I just sort of created here would be the player starts the green blocks the red blocks and the end and here you have a red gem pretty simple uh, so now the next one, like I said, we're going to want to be doing a lot of cool stuff with it. So wall jumps, all that stuff, right? But we're not going to, we want to ease the player into it through design. Now, uh, something I was thinking was, um, if we wanted to add the next color in, we could, or we could just keep going with this color and kind of making it more challenging. Just, uh, and if we want to, we can really show that wall jump tutorial, uh, or, or that wall jump mechanic right away. So here we can uh, maybe do like this, which is our green and our player starts here. And then you have to jump down here to our red with a gem right here, red. And then um, we have a wall right here which is red and actually this should extend out just a little bit more. That'll be red. And then here we could have green. So then you'd have to jump, grab the green and then we'll have another gem here that's a red and then we'll have another gem here that's a green. And then we'll have the ending right here. So this gets dramatically more complicated. I, what I'm thinking is we're gonna make this level one, this level two, and this level three. Because this just gets way too complicated. Especially just from going from this one here all the way to that one. So here we're gonna I'm gonna do um, uh, let's see here. Here we can just basically Here's green player. And it's good too. Notice how I'm starting them all on green. And this kind of gets a pattern with the player. Um, so we got green here. And then we can jump to the red. Right, red gem. And then down here, we can have the ending. Um, which we can make this red, um, just so he can't jump and go all the way over there. And then here we can maybe have on like a pathway or something. Um, so this be green, this green gem moving back and forth just to kind of show exactly what is going on there. All right, so that's gonna be our levels. Let's go ahead and get into development. All right, welcome back. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do in our project that we just created, 
let's build color master project it's empty completely empty we're gonna go ahead and create a sprite and we're gonna create our player sprite so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the convention of s a, a lowercase s and then an uppercase whatever it might be if you want to use SPR or even sprite whatever go ahead that's just the convention that you want to use but I'm gonna use s and then player and here I'm going to make it 32 by 32 and we're gonna go ahead and create just a little border there we go and um, we'll create uh, we'll make them gray and I believe if we make them gray we will be able to change his color to what we want it to be or if we didn't want to do that and we just kind of wanted to make it easy mode and we could use a shader for it but what I'm gonna do is let's just make them green and let's just do every other one so S player green just to kind of simplify it for you guys so duplicate it S player red and here you can see how many colors you actually want in the game so Notice how he's also facing towards the right. That's going to be important. S player uh, yellow. So we'll go ahead and make that yellow. And then we'll create one more. Whoops. And we'll make it um, blue. S player blue now we're not actually going to be creating all different objects for these these are just sprites that we can take from so here I'm going to create a group player sprites I'm just going to pop each one into that group now since we're always starting in our level design with the green player then we can in the uh, O player object we can easily just set the default as the green which is again why you notice that we follow that proper convention right there alright so now we've got some pretty simple stuff let's go ahead and create the block so blocks and here we are gonna have to create different objects for them so s block green and here we're gonna make it 32 by 32 and let's just uh, create something like this the easiest block I know how to do at least Oops. there we go and I guess I made it blue so we'll make it blue there duplicate it two more times s block green and then I'm not sure if we can colorize it. Oh, yes, we can. Very cool. This will be S block yellow. Right there. And then we have S block, what was the last one? Red. perfect so I have all of our blocks notice that the origin is zero zero as well that's gonna be important and here we're gonna create a group blocks and we're just gonna create the blocks so O block red and we're also going to create if we create another group and we name it parents we're going to parent all of these blocks because we don't want collision code for every single block. So I'm just going to say O block. Solid. So O block red. And we're going to parent our O block. Solid. Duplicate it. O block blue. Boom. O block yellow.
Duplicate it. O block green. All right, pretty simple stuff here. So now let's create a room. We're going to name it RM underscore level one. And I'm going to change up the size of the room just because I don't really like this. I want to do 1152 by 576. And if we start the game, I just want to see how that looks on my monitor. Actually, that might be a little bit too long. Let's do 1024. All right, and we can go ahead and start dragging these blocks into the game. So if we go off of our sheet that we created, our level one sheet, here we have, um, and let's see, we have, let's pull it up real quick, 1024 divided by 32. We have 32 blocks across. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Just want to cut it in half here. We'll do the red down there as well. Now we don't have the gems in yet, so we can't do that. And then I'm just going to kind of cut. There we go. We'll bring our player in there. And here we can kind of nicely separate it. There we go. So now we have a cool little room. Let's make the background color. Um, I mean, we can make the background color really anything we want. I'm just going to do that for now. Actually, that looks pretty ugly. Although I think that's what I had in the last color master, so we'll keep it. All right. And then we're going to need to create the sprites for the gems. So I'm going to create another sprite. Gems. S. Gem. Um, blue. So it'll be 32 by 32. And we're gonna try and create like some sort of diamond here. I'm not the best at art, so don't judge. Doesn't look half bad. <laughs> Actually, it looks pretty bad. All right. Um, we'll center it. Duplicate. 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 S gem yellow colorize it just like that s gem red just like that s gem green perfect all right, now we've got our gems in the game. Let's create another group called gems. Put that right above the parents there. And again, same thing. O gem green, solid. And with our parents, we're gonna create another parent, O gem. And our O gem green is literally just gonna parent our O gem. We don't want that solid actually. Duplicate it. O gem blue. Again, notice that I'm duplicating these so the parent is still there. I'm not creating a new object. All right, and we got O gem red. Duplicate it. O gem uh, yellow would be the last one. Awesome stuff, all right. So now in our game, we can add in a red gem right there. Perfect, looks awesome. And then we just need one more sprite. 
shall name finish in a group. This would be O end. And this will be like the sprite for the end of the uh, the end of each level. So make it zero by sixty-four. I kind of envisioned like this. Uh, actually, let's make it thirty-two by thirty-two, and let's make it a star. And then in game, we can kind of make it like go up and down. There we go, just like that. We're going old school here with the star making. Maybe I'll get somebody to redo the art here at a later time. But for now, you kind of get the point. I, I really just want to go through all of the steps with you on how to go about doing this. All right. So then um, what we're going to do is we don't need to create a group for it. Just put it right here. O end and create our star. Which will be right here. And let's just make it bob up and down real quick. So um this name already exists. Oh. S end. My bad. Make that O end. All right, so now in the create event, what we're gonna wanna do, just to make it kind of bob up and down, is vSpeed equals uh, choose negative uh, one, one, alarm zero equals 15, and we're also going to want to set in our room, our speed to 60, so we have 60 FPS in the room. Alarm zero equals 15, and then alarm zero, Alarm zero equals 15, and our V speed times equals negative one, which just reverses the position. All right, so that's pretty simple. So now if we if we run the game, nothing will happen. I think the star will bob up and down. So let's run the game. Yeah, so now we have that star bobbing up and down. Actually, it's a little bit, it's bobbing a little bit too much, so let's just do five. See how it looks. There we go. Great. Um, so now let's go ahead and go into the player. And now we can start actually programming the player stuff. So in the create event, I'm going to set a few things. Facing equals one. This is going to be the direction that we face. And we're going to flip the image X scale in our draw method to make it so that we don't need to draw like a left and a right player. We can just flip the X scale of it. All right, and then I think that's about it for right now. So in our step event, we're gonna create the basic movement code. So if keyboard check VK underscore right, H speed equals, we'll say speed, and we'll create the speed variable inside the create event. So speed equals five, which means we can pretty much tweak it and tune it to um, whatever we want without having to change all of these different values. So we'll do left and then we'll say if not keyboard check BK right and not keyboard check BK left H speed equals zero. Just basically saying if we're not pressing any of those keys then we don't we want them to stop moving. And then we can say if keyboard check press BK underscore space. And we are gonna add our wall jump in, but not right now. We're gonna say and not place free x comma y plus one. Uh, then V speed equals negative twenty. And then we need our gravity code if place free x comma y plus one gravity equals one else gravity equals zero again some pretty simple stuff here all right so now let's go ahead and go um in 
our collision code with the wall. So again, when we go to this, we don't have to go to each individual block. We go to our parents and we go to O block. And here we have some pretty simple code. If place underscore meeting x minus h speed comma y comma o block we're going to set h speed to equal zero and x to plus equal h speed now this checks if we are going into the wall um, from the left side so we'll copy this paste it down and we'll say x plus h speed and we'll say x minus equals so that's left and right collision now let's check for top and bottom we're going to say if other dot y is less than y and not place free x comma y plus v speed then we can say whoops, move underscore context uh, solid direction 90 at a max distance of 8 and then we'll say v speed equals 0 so that's basically checking for top end collision then we're just going to say if um, if place meeting x comma y plus v speed and our o block speed equals zero and move contact solid direction 270 next distance 12 so pretty simple collision code uh, basically all this does is check for if we're hitting the top of our heads on a block this checks if we're um, uh, hitting the bottom if we're, you know we're landing on a block and then the reason why I picked this collision code to use is because now we can group everything up into oh if you collide with this at a certain point left right top or bottom and you're not the same color we can do something all right so now that we have that all done we should be able to play the game now nothing's gonna happen but we do have a cool little simple platformer now so we can go back and forth we can jump we're gonna need to make that gem a little bit taller and you can notice that our player doesn't move back and forth. So in the step event, when we move right, with a curly brace, we're going to say facing equals 1. When we move left, curly brace facing equals negative 1. Okay, and then in our draw, we're going to say draw underscore sprite underscore ext sprite index image index x y our x scale is going to be facing y scale one rotation zero color is c y and alpha is one just by doing that alone we now have it flipped for us so no matter where we go it's now flipped we need to bring that gem up more believe right there right there should be good now we're going to say collision with our parent o gem for now we're just going to say with other instance destroy just to destroy the gem and then um we're going to say if other dot sprite underscore index equals s gem red then what we're going to do is say sprite underscore index equals s player red and we can copy this and paste it for all of them so blue green yellow blue green yellow let's run the game and we grab it and now look at that now our players red pretty cool stuff just by grabbing that gem there 
So what we can do now is check and uh, see basically what is going on with our collision. So here, uh, we're just going to say in any sort of collision event with it, if other dot sprite underscore index equals s block blue and sprite underscore index does not equal s player blue, then we can decide what happens. Here I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down just like that. Um, and we're just going to put the uh, or signs in. Let's see if we can bring it back just a little bit. All right, now it does want to do it. So here we can say red yellow, green, and here I'm going to say red, yellow, green. So this whole thing right here is basically saying, hey, if our block sprite index is our blue block and our sprite index isn't our, isn't our blue player while we're colliding with it, then uh, do this right so here we can just say room restart and let's run the game so here we're on our green block just fine right and I'll try not to <laughs> I'll try not to fall down in the pit there and we grab that and now we're on this just fine now we hit this and the room restarts so we now have proper collision code for our gems. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and go to the next level. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and say RM level two. And here we're gonna go with our next um, our next level that we created which was, let's go to blocks here, start with this up here, with our player, and then it changes to red. Let's get our gem over there. down there and then we want to do this and I kind of like to just color code it make it look kind of cool we have our own end right here and then in our gem we're gonna use this guy right there but we're going to want to set them up on a pathway so we'll do that in a minute and there we are right there and we should be solid and I guess we can just make like that or something just to put some other challenge into the game I'm not sure all right so let's go ahead and try for that now this is actually kind of interesting because if you're gonna want to do this you're gonna want to jump and then come down on it because if you jump up first and you'll bang right into the block up there so maybe I should change that all right so how we go about doing this is we're gonna create an, a path 
and we're gonna call this PTH level two and here we can pick this and we won't make it closed and we literally just want to click there and click there and that is our path pretty simple and in our level two we're gonna use a creation code on our gem which says path underscore start PTH underscore level two speed of one end action uh, I believe the end action can be one and absolute whoops be one so if we run the game here just starting off on level two let's see what we get it's moving just see if it comes back Um, I think our end action is wrong here. Let's try zero. Zero might stop it though. When it gets to the end, it might just stop. So you have to, I don't, I don't know what the exact numbers are for these. Yeah, it just stopped. Um, let's try two. Two is nothing. <laughs> All right, let me look this up real quick. All right, so I believe it, it's going to be path underscore um, action reverse. But I know they do have numerical values for it. I just didn't know what they were. All right, so now and then if we in our player event and we do collision with our on, we're just going to say room underscore next one or uh, go go to room underscore or wait, what is it? Room go to next. That's what it is. We'll run the game and we'll play what we have so far. So here we have our guy and we died. Let's go ahead and go with other outside room. Room restart. So we'll run it. And this is just the bare bones of what we're creating. We're actually going to end up, and if we go outside of the room, it restarts. We're going to start creating like really cool different effects coming later on. So here we have this. It reverses now. So we're just waiting for it. We go, got it. And next room. And we don't have another room, so we get an error for it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now we're going to go into the last level which is our wall jump level which i'm actually going to save for next episode because of the fact that i just did a wall jump tutorial i just did a wall jump tutorial so um go ahead and watch that it's right on my channel right there on the home page and you can kind of see where i'm going with the wall jump and you can design a level out yourself uh by next episode i will have already put that code implemented into it so uh I don't have to be repeating myself with different forms that I've already done. So, all right. All right, that's going to be it for today. Go ahead and like, go and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode. Let's go ahead and try for 100 likes this time. Thank you. Peace.